The US government has entered its 33rd day of partial shutdown, which became the longest shutdown in US history on the 12th of January 2019. It started on the 22nd of December 2018 and occurred when President Donald Trump sought to include $5.7 billion in the US government's spending budget to fund a border wall along the Mexico-United States border. A Senate vote on the proposed spending bill failed to secure a majority vote to pass it through to Congress. The goal of the intended wall is to stop illegal crossings of people from Mexico into the United States. Spotted sandpipers and other migratory birds will still be free to cross the border. They do not require documents and can freely feed and poop on either side of the border without a permit or ID card. Currently, the Mexico-United States border has more than 930 kilometres of barriers in place. The total length of the border is 3,145 kilometres, so in my estimation, it will require a further 2,215 kilometres or 1,376 miles of extra barriers to be installed in order to fully protect the border. Of course, any barrier is not impassable. There still needs to be people employed to monitor the border. If a group of Mexicans decide to dig a hole under or through a barrier and there's nobody there to stop them, then the wall is effectively useless. Any barrier only slows down the flow of illegal crossings. With enough time, patience and motivation, pretty much anybody could get through a wall. To be effective, a strong border wall not only requires concrete and steel, it will also require cameras, sensors and a lot of additional manpower. The ongoing costs will be huge. So what has been the result of the US government partial shutdown? What does a partial shutdown even mean? Well, it means that over 800,000 federal workers are going without pay. 380,000 workers from nine departments and several smaller agencies have been furloughed, which means they are sitting at home wondering when they'll get their next paycheck. 420,000 workers are considered essential and therefore must continue work without pay. Affected departments include Department of Agriculture, Department of Justice, Department of Transportation, and Department of Homeland Security. How fitting that the Department of Homeland Security, which is responsible for border security, is without funding thanks to a proposed border wall. To be fair, 70% of DHS employees are considered essential and are not furloughed during government shutdowns. They just have to prevent terrorism and protect the borders without a paycheck. Other workers that are considered essential include FBI agents, US Marshals, Coast Guard employees, correctional officers, Transportation Security Administration employees, Forest Service firefighters, and Weather Service forecasters. So when will the shutdown end? Trump has threatened that he's willing to keep the government shut down for months or even years. I can't imagine any Coast Guard employees or TSA workers working for a year without pay. Some of them are already not able to pay the rent. I'd say it's a bit of bravado on Trump's behalf to show that he's not going to back down on his border wall promise. Basically, it comes down to who will give in first, Trump or Congress. So what type of scenario would it take for Trump to give in first? Well, if lots of airport security staff started quitting their jobs, or government websites started becoming insecure, or food safety became an issue, then Trump's hands might be forced to end the standoff. It might be possible that President Trump and Congress make a deal to resolve the shutdown. It doesn't seem likely, but it's possible. The House has recently passed a short-term spending bill to fund the government through till the end of February, but this is expected to go nowhere in the Senate. On Saturday, Trump offered temporary protection from deportations for some undocumented immigrants in exchange for $5.7 billion in wall funding, but the Democrats quickly rejected the proposal. There's also the option of Trump declaring a national emergency, which is usually kept for times of crises when the White House needs to bypass Congress to get funds quickly. This would require Trump to seize property from unwilling owners using the power of eminent domain. Eminent domain allows the government to expropriate private property for public use, but requires just compensation under US law. A third of the needed land is owned by the federal government. The rest would have to be taken from private owners, state governments, and Native American tribes, most of whom are unlikely to sell voluntarily. 
I'm sure there would be massive protests and people that would simply refuse to leave their land. The armed forces would have to be called in, causing a public and international relations disaster. In Texas alone, there are almost 5,000 private properties in the likely path of the proposed border wall. Securing the land and the ongoing legal battles over compensation would literally drag on for years. It would be a tough argument to make that a border wall is required as an emergency measure when it's going to take years to secure land and to complete the actual construction. Emergency powers are in place to deal with immediate threats. If the supposed emergency can be dealt with by a wall that takes literally years to construct, then it could be argued that it was not an emergency in the first place. No, I don't think Trump will call a national emergency, and if he did, it probably won't get him his wall. But let's go back to the original reason for the partial government shutdown. President Trump wants to secure $5.7 billion in funding for the proposed border wall. But what will $5.7 billion actually fund? It will actually only fund about 100 miles of new border barriers, so that still leaves hundreds of miles of unprotected border. During his 2015-2016 presidential campaign, Trump promised an extra 1,000 miles of additional border barriers. I just don't see that happening. If all of this drama and disruption has occurred over just 100 miles of new wall, then how could he possibly get the extra 900 miles? Imagine if Trump shut down the government again to get a further 100 miles of wall. The American public would simply not stand for it. I think the proposed border wall is dead in the water. Despite his bravado, despite his rhetoric, President Trump simply cannot deliver on his border wall promise. He needs to focus his efforts elsewhere, because his border wall is becoming an international embarrassment for America. The wall will not stop drugs. The wall will not stop illegal immigration. The wall will not stop terrorism. The wall is simply a symbol of America's failed immigration policies. Give up on the wall, President Trump, for the sake of the United States and your own political future.